plays in the evolving scheme of things is understood by three-dimensional man. A treatise can be written on the subject, and yet leave it unexhausted. Much light comes if we can ponder deeply on the three expressions of love. Love in the personality, love in the ego, and love in the monad. Love in the personality gradually develops through the stages of love of self, pure and simple and entirely selfish, to love of family and friends, to love of men and women, until it arrives at the stage of love of humanity or group love consciousness which is the predominant characteristic of the ego. A master of compassion loves, suffers with, and remains with his kind and with his kin. Love in the ego gradually develops from love of humanity into love universal, a love that expresses not only love of humanity, but also love of the diva evolutions in their totality and of all forms of divine manifestation. Love in the personality is love in the three worlds. Love in the ego is love in the solar system, and all that it contains, whilst love in the monad demonstrates a measure of cosmic love, and embraces much that is outside the solar system altogether. 84 CC 512 594 ATREATISE on Cosmic Fire This term the law of love is after all too generic a term to apply to one law governing one plane, but will have to suffice for the present, as it conveys the type of idea that is needed to our minds. The law of love is in reality but the law of the system in demonstration on all the planes. Love was the impelling motive for manifestation, and love it is that keeps all in ordered sequence. Love bears all on the path of return to the Father's bosom, and love eventually perfects all that is. It is love that builds the forms that cradle temporarily the inner hidden life, and love is the cause of the disruption of those forms, and their utter shattering, so that the life may further progress. Love manifests on each plane as the earth that drives the evolving monad onwards to its goal, and love is the key to the Diva Kingdom, and the reason of the blending of the two kingdoms eventually into the divine hermaphrodite. Love works through the concrete rays in the building of the system, and in the rearing of the structure that shelters the spirit, and love works through the abstract rays for the full and potent development of that inherent divinity. Love demonstrates, through the concrete rays, the aspects of divinity, forming the personal that hides the one self. Love demonstrates through the abstract rays in developing the attributes of divinity, in evolving to fullest measure the kingdom of God within. Love in the concrete rays leads to the path of occultism. Love in the abstract rays leads to that of the mystic. Love forms the sheath and inspires the light. Love causes the logoic vibration to surge forward, carrying all on its way, and bringing all to perfected manifestation. In system I, activity, desire for expression, and the impulse to move is the basic note. That activity produced certain results, certain permanent effects, and thus formed the nucleus for the present system. Order. Activity is the foundation of this system of order. T-H-O-U-P-H-T-A-N-D-F-I-R-E-L-E-M-E-N-T-A-L-S 595 Love, and leads to system 3, wherein ordered activity, with ordered love for its impulse, results in ordered loving power. The sixth ray of devotion and the sixth law of love have a close alliance, 
and on the sixth plane comes the powerful working out in the lower triad, the personality of the law of love. On the astral plane, the home of the desires, originate those feelings which we call personal love. In the lowest type of human being this shows itself as animal passion, as evolution proceeds it shows itself as a gradual expansion of the love faculty, passing through the stages of love of mate, love of family, love of surrounding associates, to love of one's entire environment. Patriotism gives place later to love of humanity. Often humanity is exemplified in one of the great ones. The astral plane is, at the present time, the most important for us, for in desire not corrected or transmuted lies the difference between the personal consciousness and that of the ego.85 in the sixth scene. This can be seen clearly, it is the scheme of love. New from one angle, the Venusian scheme is the second, and from another it is the sixth. It depends upon whether we reason from the circumference to the center or the reverse. It is the home of the planetary logos of the sixth ray. This may sound like a contradiction, but it is not so really. We must remember the interlocking, the gradual shifting and changing, that takes place in time on all. 85 Why do we consider this matter of the devils of the middle system, as we might call those connected with this system and with Buddy and Kamamana, in our consideration of God forms? For two reasons. One is that all that is in the solar system is with substance energized from the cosmic mental and astral plane, and built in depth. Formed through the power of electrical law, all that can be known is but forms and sold by ideas. Secondly, that in the knowledge of the creative processes of the system, man learns for himself how in time to become a creator. We might illustrate this by remarking that one of the main functions of the Theosophical movement in all its many branches is to build a form which can be ensouled, in due time, by the idea of brotherhood. 596 ATREATISE on Cosmic Fire The Rays In the same way the Earth chain is the third if moved from one aspect and the fifth moved from another. In the sixth chain of each scene, this sixth law and the sixth ray have a very important significance. Whilst the seventh chain of each scheme is always synthetic love and activity in a perfect balance. The same effect can be demonstrated in the sixth round. In the sixth round of the present chain of the Earth scheme, the sixth law will demonstrate with great clarity and force, as love shown in brotherhood, love translated or transmuted from the astral to the Buddhic. So in the sixth root trace and the sixth subrace, a similar analogy will be seen. Out of the shattered form of the fifth subrace of the fifth root race, built up under the fifth ray of concrete knowledge, is made in the fifth law of fixation, will emerge the sixth subrace of brotherly love, love shown in the realization of the one life latent in each son of God. Seven. The Law of Sacrifice and Death This law links itself to the third law, that if this integration following the connection that always exists between the atomic and the physical plane. The Law of Disintegration controls the fivefold destruction of forms in the five lower worlds, and the Law of Death controls similarly in the three worlds. It is subsidiary to the third law. The law of sacrifice is the law of death in the subtle bodies, whilst what we call death is the analogous thing in the physical body. This law governs the gradual disintegration of concrete forms and their sacrifice to the evolved.
evolving life, and is closely linked in its manifestation with the seventh ray. This ray is the one that largely controls, that manipulates, that geometrizes and that holds sway. Over the form side, governing the elemental forces of nature, the physical plane is the most concrete exemplification of the form side, it holds the divine life in prison door. T-H-O-U-G-H-T-A-N-D-F-I-R-E-L-E-M-E-N-T-A-L-S 597 Enmeshed in its gentlest point, and it works at this time in line with the seventh law. In a mysterious way this law is the reverse side of the first, or the law of vibration. It is Vulcan and Neptune in opposition, which is as yet an almost incomprehensible thing for us. The densest form of expression on the physical plane is after all but a form of synthesis, just as the rarest form of expression on the highest plane is the unity or synthesis of a finer kind. One is the synthesis of matter, and the other the synthesis of life. This law governs the seventh chain in each scheme, each chain having achieved the fullest expression possible in the scheme, comes under the law of death, and obscuration and disintegration supervenes. In a cosmic sense and analogy, it is the law that governs the coming in of Prulaya at the end of a system. It is the law that shatters the cross of the cosmic type, and places the form of the Christ within the tomb for a period of time. The principle of mutation. In concluding the above information about the laws, it is needful that we all recognize the extreme danger of dogmatizing about these matters, and the risk of laying down hard and fast rules. Much must remain unexplained and untouched, and much also will serve to raise only questions in our minds. Comprehension is as yet impossible. Until fourth dimensional sight is ours, it will scarcely be possible for us to do more than hint at, and get a passing vision of, the complexity and the interweaving in the system. It is not easy for us to do more than grip as a mental concept the fact that the rays, schemes, planets, chains, realms, races and laws form a new seen from the angle of human vision the confusion seems unimaginable and the key of its solution to be so hidden is to be useless, yet, seen from the angle of the world sight. 598 ATREATIS -E on cosmic fire. The whole moves in unison and is geometrically accurate. In order to give some idea of the complexity of the arrangement, I would like here to point out that the rays themselves circulate the law of karma controlling the interweaving. For instance, ray I may pass around a scheme if it is the paramount ray of the scheme with its first subray manifesting in a chain, its second in a round, its third in a world series, its fourth in a root race, its fifth in a subrace, and its sixth in a branch race. I give this in illustration, and not as the statement of a fact in present manifestation. This gives us some idea of the vastness of the process, and of its wonderful beauty. It is impossible for us, sweeping through on some one ray, to visualize or in any way to apprehend this beauty, yet, to those on higher levels and with a wider range of vision, the gorgeousness of the design is apparent. This complexity is first very much increased because we do not yet understand the principle governing this mutation. Nor is it possible for even the highest human mind in the three worlds to be more than sense and approximate that principle. 
By mutation I mean the fact that there is a constant changing and shifting, and endless interleaving and interlocking, and a ceaseless ebb and flow, in the dramatic interplay of the forces that stand for the dual synthesis of spirit and matter. There is constant rotation in the rays and planes, in there. Relative importance from the standpoint of time which is the standpoint most closely associated with us. But we can rest assured that there is some fundamental principle directing all the activities of the logos in his system, and by wrestling to discover the basic principle on which our microcosmic lives rest, we may discover aspects of this inherent logoic principle. This opens to our consideration a wide range of visions and T-H-O-U-G-H-T-A-N-D-F-I-R-E-L-E-M-E-N-T-A-L-S-599 Though it emphasizes the complexity of the subject, it also demonstrates the divine magnitude of the scheme with its magnificent intricacies. The reason the fourth is a major round is because in this round two things happened. The spark of mind was implanted and the door was opened from the animal kingdom into the human. And later, another door opened, onto the path leading from the human kingdom into the spiritual again a dual reason. The fifth round is a major round because it marks a point in evolution where those who will achieve the goal, and those who will not, are sharply differentiated into two groups. The seventh is a major round because it will mark the merging of the two evolutions, the human and the diva. The major root races are chosen under the law of correspondence. In the third root race came the third outpouring, the merging and the point of contact between the spiritual triad and the lower quaternary. The fifth root race marks a point where higher and lower manas approximate, and where the concrete mind, meeting its highest development of this round, gives place to the intuition from above. Here again we have a twofold reason. The seventh root race again demonstrates dual attainment, love and activity, the basis of the third system of all power. The three major rays, being dual, are their own sufficient explanation. There is present the mode of expression of the three aspects, and demonstrate under their appropriate logoi, who manipulate world affairs through the three departments, of which the rulers on our planet are the Lord Maitreya, the Manu, and the Mahachohan. The three major planes demonstrate easily their unique position on plane 2 we have the home of the monads of love, on plane 5 we find the habitat of their reflection, the reincarnating egos, and 600 ATREATISE on cosmic fire. On the physical plane we find the working out at its densest point of the life of the spirit. This principle of mutation governs every department in the law of correspondences, and certain things can be stated as regards the system, and its component parts which will be found illuminating if we remember that they are facts for the present. Let me again illustrate. We have been told that the three major rays at this time are the first, the second, and the seventh. But later, the rays now major may become subsidiary, and others take their place, though for this solar system the second ray, being the synthetic ray, will always be a major ray. Perhaps we can here get a hint on this great principle, though we must be careful not to draw it out to too fine a conclusion. For this system the major rays will always be the good rays, the negative positive rays, the masculine feminine rays, this being the dual system. The major rays for system 3 will be those in triple manifestation. The following table 
may be found of interest, is regarded as relative, and is holding information for the present time, but also is being subject to change in circulation. Seven rays. Seven principles. Seven chains. Seven planes. Major one, two, seven. Three major. Four subsidiary converging on the fifth. Monad, ego and personality, synthesizing at various stages the four subsidiary. Major 1, 4, 7. Major 2, 5, 7. 7 man man terrace, major 3, 4, 7, 7 round. Major 4, 5, 7. 7 race races. 7 sub races. 7 initiations. Major 3, 5, 7. Major 1, 5, 6. Major 1, 4, 5. It's new from the angle of human attainment, and 1, 5, 7 is moved from a higher. T-H-O-U-G-H-T-A-N-D-F-I-R-E-L-E-M-E-N-T-A-L-S 601. 2. L-E-M-E-N-T-A-L-S-A-N-D-D-A-D-A-S 1. A. The ruler of higher Agni. Agni and the solar logos. Thus far in this treatise we have considered the first section of the book which has dealt somewhat with the internal fires of the system, both macrocosmic and microcosmic. In this the second section we are dealing with the fire of mind. This section, together with the nine introductory questions, constitutes the main part of the treatise. In it we have dealt with the nature and function of mind and with the ego of brain. We have dealt also, somewhat, with the form side of thought, with its material manifestation and with its substance. We proceed now to take up the consideration of the ruler of fire, Agni, and are brought to the study of the vitality that energizes and the life that animates, to the contemplation of the fire that drives, propels, and produces the activity and organization of all forms. The realization of this will reveal the fact that what we are, Dealing with is the life and the lives. 86 of it is called 87. 86 the life and the lives. H. P. B. Says in the secret doctrine. Occultism does not accept anything inorganic in the cosmos. The expression employed by science, inorganic substance, means simply that the latent life, slumbering in the molecules of so-called inert matter, is incognizable. All is life, and every atom of even mineral dust is a life, go beyond our comprehension and perception. Life therefore is everywhere in the universe, wherever there is an atom of matter, a particle or a molecule, even in its most gaseous condition, there is life in it however latent and unconscious. S. B. I. 269, 281, 282. 87 The Life and the Lives. 1. Everything lives and is conscious, but all life and consciousness is not similar to the human. S. D. I. 79. A. Life is the one form of existence manifesting in matter. B. Matter is the vehicle for the manifesting of soul. Circa. Soul is the vehicle for the manifesting of spirit. Therefore, First Logos, Second Logos, Third Logos Cooperate. Illustration. Life of the Third Logos Animating Atoms of Matter. Life of the Second Logos Animating the Forms, or Aggregate of Atoms. Life of the First Logos Animating the Composite Forms. 2. 
the one life synthesizes this triplicity. Let us work this out in the macrocosm and microcosm. 602-A-T-R-E-A-T-I-S-E-O-N-C-O-S-M-I-C-F-I-R-E -E -E. In the secret doctrine, with Agni, the Lord of Fire, the Creator, the Preserver, and the Destroyer, and with the 49 fires through which He manifests. We are dealing with solar fire per se, with the essence of God, with the coherent light of all forms, with the consciousness in its evolving aspect, or with Agni, the sum total of the gods. He is Vishnu and the sun in his glory. He is the fire of matter and the fire of mind blended and fused. He is the intelligence which throbs in every atom. He is the mind that actuates the system. He is the fire of substance and the substance of the fire. He is the flame and that which the flame destroys. Students of the secret doctrine when they read carelessly are apt to consider him only as the fire of matter and omit to note that he is himself the sum total and this is especially the case when they find that Agni is the lord of the mental plane.88 he is the animating life of the solar system and that life is the life of Bohat, Prana, Electricity, Magnetic Fluid, are all terms used for this one vitalizing life. The microcosm is animated and vitalized by Prana, and its actions controlled by the indwelling thinker. The macrocosm is animated and vitalized by Bohat, its actions are controlled by the informing intelligence we call the Logos. 88 inches, Agni, who is the source of all that gives light and heat. So that there are different species of Agni fire, but, whatever other fires there may be, they are but the ramifications of Agni, the immortal, Rig Veda, L, 59i. The primary division of Agni is threefold. Agni, says the Vishnu Purana, has three sons, Suchi, Pavamana, and Pavaka, I, X. Suchi means the Sora, or solar fire. Pavamana means Nirmathana, fire produced by friction, as the friction of two pieces of wood. And Pavaka means the Dani or fire of the firmament, i.e. the fire of the lightning, or electric fire. The sources of these three fires I may observe and pass and constitute the three principal deities spoken of in the Veda, namely, Surya, the sun, representing the solar fire, Indra and sometimes, Vayu, the rain-producing deity, representing the fire of the firmament, and Agni, representing the terrestrial fire, the fire produced by friction Hirukta, 7, 4, and all these three, be it remembered, are merely the ramifications of one Agni, which in its turn is an emanation from the Supreme One, as the reader will find from the allegorical description given of Agni as being the mouth-born son of Brahma, in the Vishnu Purana. Now, each of the triple forms of Agni has numerous subdivisions. The solar fire is distinguished by several divisions according to the nature of the rays emitted by the great luminary, the Theosophist, Volume 7, P. 196. T-H-O-U-G-H-T-A-N-T-F-I-R-E-L-E-M-E-N-T-A-L-S 603. God, the energy of the Logos, and the manifestation of the radiance which veils the central sun. Only as he is recognized as Bohat, the energy of matter, as wisdom, the nature of the ego and its motivation, and as essential unity, can any new conception be arrived at as to his nature or being. He is not the solar Logos on the cosmic. 
also blame for the egoic consciousness of the logos is more than his physical manifestation, but Agni is the sum total of that portion of the egoic ego which is reflected down into his physical vehicle. He is the life of the logoic personality, with all that is included in that expression. He is to the solar logos on his own plane plus. The coherent personality of a human being is to his ego in the causal body. This is a very important point to be grasped, and if meditated upon will bring to the student much enlightenment. This is the life that fuses and blends the threefold nature of the logos when in physical incarnation. This is the coherent force that makes a unity of the triple logo of personality, but man can only arrive at his essential nature by the study of the logo of physical. Vehicle hence the difficulty, he can only understand by a consideration of the psychic emanation as it can be sensed and viewed by passing the history of the races in retrospect. Man's personality reveals his nature as his life progresses, his psychic quality unfolds as the years slip away, and when he passes out of incarnation he is spoken of in terms of quality, good or bad, selfish or unselfish, the effect of his emanation during life is that which remains in men's minds. Thus only can the Logos personality express itself, and our knowledge of his nature is consequently limited by our close perspective, and handicapped by the fact that we are participants in his life, and integral parts of his manifestation. It is only as we begin to function upon the Buddhist plane that we can in any way, live in the subjective. 604 ATREATISE on cosmic fire. Side of nature, and it is only as our knowledge of the spiritual life increases, and as we pass definitely through the portal of initiation into the fifth kingdom that we can appreciate the distinction between the dense physical and the vital body. Only as we become polarized in the cosmic etheric body and are no longer held prisoner by a dense material sheet for the three lower planes or but the dense body of the logos do we come to a fuller understanding of the psychic nature of the logos, for we stand then in the body which bridges the gulf between the dense physical and the astral body of the logos. Only when this is the case do we understand the function of the Lord Agni is the vital life of the cosmic etheric, is the vitality of the heavenly men and the activity of their sheets. B. Agni in the mental plane. I seek to deal with a very important point here, emphasizing the close connection between Agni, the sum total of the life force of the Lugo of threefold personality, as he is seen at work on the mental plane which closely concerns man and that manifesting driving force or intelligent will which emanates from the cosmic mental plane. There is a very interesting series of correspondences to be worked out here and we might briefly indicate the lines to be followed in this connection by the ensuing tabulation. The fifth cosmic plane, the fifth systemic plane, the fifth subplane of the physical, the fifth principle, the fifth law, the fifth ray, the fifth realm, the cosmic mental, the mental plane, the gaseous, manas, fixation, the law of concretion, concrete knowledge, the round of manasic attainment, the fifth root race, THOUGHTANDFIREELEMENTALS 605 The Aryan Mental Development The Fifth Sub Race The Fifth Group of Devas The Fifth Manvantara The Fifth Team The Fifth Mahamanvantara 
our solar system. The fifth chain. The fifth hierarchy. Vibrations of fifth order manasic. The Teutonic and Anglo-Saxon. Concrete mind. Fire devas of the mental brain. Three fifths of the Manasipu Rizichi. The Lord of Concrete Science. The Solar Logos achieves the fifth major initiation. Principal Evolution Fire Devas. The Greater Builders. It will, therefore, be apparent that when the system is viewed in reverse order and the physical plane is counted as the first, as it often is when considering it as the field of strictly human evolution, that the third plane and mental plane comes under the same view as correspondences and Agni, as the energizing factor of the dense physical body of the logos, or as the fire of his most concrete manifestation, vitalizing, warming and molding all together, has to be considered. Three hierarchies are, in this Mahaman Vantara, of profound significance, the fourth or human creative hierarchy, and the two Diva hierarchies, the fifth and sixth. The fourth hierarchy in the larger scheme is literally the ninth, for five hierarchies have earlier passed on and are considered as pure abstractions. In this system concretion concerns us, and the blending of form and of energy into one coherent whole. In the ninth, tenth and eleventh hierarchies lie the to the nature of Agni, the Lord of Fire, the sum total of systemic vitality. He who understands the significance of these figures and their relation to each other as triple division of a unity in time and space will have to 606-A-T-R-E-A-T-I-S-E-O-N-C-O-S-M-I-C-F-I-R-E -E -E. Covered one of the keys which will unlock a door hitherto fast closed. They are the numbers of achievement, of potentiality brought into full activity and of innate capacity demonstrating in perfect fruition. All potentiality lies in the vitalizing, energizing power of Agni, and in his ability to stimulate. He is life itself, and the driving force of evolution, of psychic development and of consciousness. This fact is hidden in these figures, and not the evolution of substance, which is the result, emanating from psychic causes. These three numbers are the basis of specific calculations which concern the ego of cycles, and the cycles of Vishnu, as distinguished from the cycles dealing with the third aspect. Occult students have not sufficiently grasped the fact that objectivity is an inevitable result of an inner conscious subjective life. When this is better apprehended, bodies on the physical plane, for instance, will be purified, developed and beautified through a scientific attention paid to the development of the psyche, to the unfoldment of the ego, and to the stimulation of the egoic vibration. The cause will be dealt with and not the effect, and hence the growing appreciation by the human family of the study of psychology, even though as yet they are but studying the common man of the body, and have not reached back to the egoic consciousness. The lunar lords have had their day, now Agni, as the solar lord of life and energy, will assume due importance in human life. See, Agni and the Three Fires. In studying the manifestation of Agni in the solar system it should be remembered that we are considering here his essential nature as actuating fire. We have seen that he is the threefold logo of personality, the threefold logos in a subjective sense, and the T-A-B-U-L-A-T-I-O-N-B-I song 607. 608. A-T-R-E-A-T-I-S-E on Cosmic Fire. Form aspect is only subsidiary. Perhaps a tabulation.
station may make this point clearer. Each of these three aspects of the one fire, showing as the created fire, preserving fire, and destroying fire, must be studied as electrical phenomena, and this under the aspects of light, flame, and heat, of electricity, radiance and motion, of will, desire and action. Only thus will the true nature of Agni be apprehended. As the Logoth personality he is demonstrating the triplicity of sheets forming a unity, and only thus will it become apparent why at this stage in evolution the material aspect is the most considered. The entire system is the physical sheet of the Logos and consequently the most easily cognized, for the Logos is as yet centered in his cosmic sheets and can only reveal himself through their medium. Man's just apprehension of this mystery of electricity will only come about as he studies himself, and knows himself to be a triple fire, manifesting in many aspects. Man, a fire, monodic fire, egoic fire, electric fire, spirit will, solar fire, the central, consciousness, spiritual sun, the heart, love wisdom of the sun, personality fire, fire by friction physical man, physical sun, each of these fires can also be studied in a threefold manner and under three aspects. T-H-E-M-O-N-A-D Will Aspect Love Wisdom Active Intelligence Electric Fire Solar Fire Fire by Friction Heat Flame Light Spiritual Will Spiritual Spiritual Love Intelligence Will Atma T-H-O-U-G-H-T-A-N-D-F-I-R-E-L-E-M-E-N-T-A-L-S 609 T-H-E-G-O Electric Fire Love Buddy Solar Fire Wisdom The Rays The Spark Conscious Will The Jewel and the Lotus The Twelve Active Manas Fire by Friction Substance Intelli Gen The Perma Nen Adam Conscious T-H-E-P-E-R-S-O-N-A-L-I-T-Y Will Love Activity Physical Mental Body Electric Fire Lower Mind Astral Body Fire by Body Solar Fire Prana Activity Friction Thought Activity. Desire. I seek to emphasize here the fact that in this threefold manifestation there is a nice unfoldment. It should ever be borne in mind that seven is the number which governs the evolution of substance and of form building in the solar system, but that nine is the number governing the development of the consciousness within that form of the psyche. This is seen in the sevenfold display of logo of life through the planetary scheme, and the ninefold nature of egoic unfoldment. Here substitutes for the words, monad, ego and personality, the three aspects of the logos, and will bear in mind that as yet all that he can ascertain or cognize is the words of the logos manifestation of the personality it will be apparent why so much must remain mysterious to even the higher grades of initiates, and why even the perfected Nyan Chohan cannot penetrate the secrets of the logos outside. 15.89A 89H P B In the secret doctrine refers to The solution of the riddle Before which even the highest Dian Chohan must bow in 610 A T R E A T I S E 